What is deep work? Let's start with a big question. So, I mean, it's it's my term for when you're focusing without distraction on a cognitively demanding task, which is something we've all done, but we had never really given it a name necessarily that was separate from other type of work. And so I gave it a name and said, let's compare that to other types of efforts you might do while you're working and see that the deep work efforts actually have a huge benefit that we might be underestimating. What does it mean to, to work deeply on something? I, you know, I had been calling it hard focus in my writing uh, before that. Well, so the context you would understand, I was in the theory group in CSAIL at MIT, right? So I was surrounded at the time when I was coming up with these ideas by these professional theoreticians. And that's like a murderer's row of thinkers there, right? I mean, it's like Turing Award, Turing Award, MacArthur, Turing Award. I mean, y- y- you know the crew, right? Theoretical computer science. Theoretical right? computer science, yeah. Yeah, so so I, I'm in the theory group, right? <laughs> Doing theoretical computer science, uh, and I publish a book. So you know, I, so I, I was in this milieu where I was being exposed to people uh, where focus was their tier one skill. Like that's what you would talk about, right? Like how how intensely I can focus. That was the the key skill. It was like your 440 time or something if you were a, an athlete, right? So so this is something that people were actually the uh, the the theory folks are thinking about. Oh yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Like they're openly discussing like how do you focus? Th- I mean, I don't know if they would, you know, quantify it, but but focus was the tier one skill. So you you would come in. You, here would be a typical day. You'd come in, uh, and Eric Domain would be sitting in front of a whiteboard, yeah, right, with a whole group of visitors who had come to work with them, and maybe they projected like a, a grid on there because they're working on some graph theory problem. You go to lunch. You go to the gym. You come back. They're sitting there staring at the same. Same whiteboard, right? Like that's the tier one skill. <laughs> this is the difference between different disciplines. Like I, I often feel for many reasons like a fraud, but I definitely feel like a fraud when I hang out with like either mathematicians or physicists. It's like, it feels like they're doing the legit work because when you talk we, closer in computer science, you get to programming or like machine learning, like the, the, the experimental machine learning or like just the engineering version of it, it it's it feels like you're gone so far away from what's required to solve something fundamental about this universe. It feels like you're just like cheating your way into like some kind of trick to figure out how to solve a problem in this one particular case. Yeah, that's how it feels. Like, right, and it's a. Uh, I'd be interested to to hear what you think about that because um, programming doesn't always feel like you need to, to think deeply, to work deeply, but sometimes it does. So it's, it does. A, it's a weird dance. Uh, for sure code does, right? I mean, especially if you're coming up with original algorithmic designs, I think it's a great example of deep work. I mean, yeah, the the, the, the hardcore theoreticians, yeah, they, they push it to an extreme. I mean, I, I think it's like knowing that athletic endeavor is good and then hanging out with a Olympic athlete. You're like, oh, I see that's what it is. Right. Uh, now for the grad students like me, we're not anywhere near that level, but the faculty, the, the faculty in that group, these were the cognitive Olympic athletes. But coding, I think, is a classic example of deep work because I got this problem I want to solve. I have all of these tools and I have to combine them somehow creatively and on the fly. But but so basically I had been exposed to that. So I was used to this notion when I was in grad school and I was writing my blog, I'd write about hard focus. You know, that was the term I used. Then I published this book, So Good They Can't Ignore You, which came out in 2012. So like right as I began as a professor. And that book had this notion of skill being really important for career satisfaction, that uh, it's not just following your passion. You have to actually really get good at something and then you use that skills as leverage. And there's this big follow-up question to that book of, okay, well, how do I get really good at this? (laughs) Yeah. And then I look back to my grad school experience. I was like, huh, there is this focus thing that we used to do. I wonder how generally applicable that is into the knowledge sector. And so as I started thinking about it, it became clear there's this interesting storyline that emerged that, okay, actually undistracted concentration is not just important for esoteric theoreticians. It's important here and it's important here and it's important here. And that involved into the, uh, the deep work hypothesis, which is across the whole knowledge work sector, Focus is very important, and we've accidentally created circumstances where we just don't do a lot of it. 